sometimes when you do testimonies, you could be here all day. <laughs> so, um, but I just want to, so just to share my testimony as I come in to, to, to speak about what the Bible reading that we just had. Um, what's God done through me in the last year? Well, I think the biggest thing for me has been he's developed my prophetic gifting. Um, I went to a conference in November, so admittedly it's only the last couple of months, but um, I've been doing this kind of thing throughout the year with uh, Ian and Fatima at CLG um, and a couple of other church leaders from the area. And um, the conference really helped it could, to develop pr- the prophetic as a lifestyle. Now, if you don't like the word prophetic, just think of it as hearing God. That's basically it, just hearing God. Learning to hear God for people on a regular basis as a lifestyle is something that you do every day. And I've found that it's opened up the doors for conversation and just amazing things to happen. Uh, little things. They're not, when I say amazing things, they're just little. They're not big earth-shattering things that happen, but it encourages, it builds up, it strengthens that person that you're able to give a word to. Um, and when I did the conference, I mean, I got about, I had, I've got about 5,000 words of um, of prophetic words that people have spoke over me from just three days, which I still haven't had a chance to go through properly. Um, but then I was able to share with people, and pretty much every word that I was giving to people, except for maybe one, they were all resonating with people. It was something that God was doing in our midst at the time, and it was brilliant. So that's what I think what God's been doing in me in the last year. In the, in the next year, what I really want God to do and increase in me is to enable me to have eyes of compassion, Jesus' eyes of compassion, to develop within me God's heart of love for people more. Um, Just, yeah, I I feel that I really need that as a person. I want to grow in God's love even more and have those eyes of compassion so that when I look at people, I just see exactly what Jesus sees, somebody that's beloved, um, somebody that, that needs him. Uh, for us as a church, though, uh, just to extend this a little bit more, what I really feel for us as a church is that the Lord, I, want, I, I pray that the Lord will guide us into our essential decisions for the future, particularly around key areas of church life so that we can be organized. I feel like we really need to just get organized so that we've got vehicles in place to help us grow. In a, in a positive way, um, to grow not just numerically, but to grow in our faith particularly. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's where I'm feeling um, for us as a church uh, that we want to grow. So, that's, so yeah, thank you all for your testimonies, um, and we pray that God will um, work even more in us in the next year. We pray that 2022 is a better year than 2020 and 2021, because both those years, in my opinion, are quite trying and difficult. And praise the Lord, this year I don't have a sinus and chest infection where I'm coughing all the time. Uh, I learned my lesson from last year. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> so, um, so, yes. So, cast your mind back to the Bible reading um, that we had with blind Bartimaeus. He's at, the, he's at the roadside, and he, Jesus is coming past, and he cries out, and people tell him to shut up, and he cries out all the more. And then he comes to Jesus, and Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? I wonder if you could just, if it's helpful to close your eyes, just imagine that you are blind Bartimaeus, and imagine that Jesus is coming to you, and he asks you this, what do you want me to do for you? What would you say? What are you saying to Jesus now as you, as you look at him in the face, as you have a little chat, and say, what do you want me to do for you? Just hold that in your minds as we go through. And as we're thinking, as we're coming to the beginning of new year, a new calendar year, I thought this was a great story to begin. And to think about this question that Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you? And you think about it in the context of the story, you're like, come on, Jesus. You can see that the guy is blind. He had to be led up to you. You know, it, it's obvious. Why are you asking him what you want me to do for you? Of course the guy wants to see again. But you see, the point of Jesus' questions are never the data. They're never about the answer that you give. In this context particularly, it's about the conversation that Jesus wants to have. Jesus wants blind Bartimaeus, or blind Bart as I like to call him, 
Jesus wants him to have a chat. Jesus wants a relationship with him. It's never about the content of the conversation. It's about the conversation. It's about talking. He wanted blind Bartimaeus to declare himself. In other words, Jesus wants us to have a relationship with him. That's what it's all about. In much the same way as a small child will, um, you know, when they get to a certain age, about sort of three, four, five, every, every other question out of their mouth is, why? 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 You've all, you've all had children who come every, you know, every question, why? Why? They don't, they're never going to understand the answer that you give them, particularly if it's about something complicated. What they want is a response from you. They want you to talk. And so they know that they'll get you to talk if they just ask why, because it always elicits a response. That's much the same as what Jesus is doing here. It's like he's asking why. <laughs> he, wants, he wants you to talk. And so at the beginning of this year, I think Jesus comes to us, much like we did in that imagining exercise, and he asks us, what do you want me to do for you. Now, I don't know what your answer is to that question. You probably have a bit of an idea of what my answer is after my, my little testimony there. But he asks us that question, not because he wants us to know, wants to know specifically, because he already knows that, but because he wants a relationship with us. He wants us to be in communication with him always. He wants us to acknowledge our desires to him. Because the Bible tells us God is good, and if God is good, He wants good things for us. So why would we not desire good things from a good God? Obviously, we would do. So that's the premise that I'm coming from there. So how, but the, the question is, how then do we do this? How can we answer this question and be in communication with Jesus on a regular basis? And I think blind Bartimaeus gives us a little bit of help here in, in the way he responds to Jesus. He called out, and then the, the people told him to shut up. He carried on calling out. He ignored the world. He threw off his cloak. My translation says he threw off his cloak. Throwing off his cloak, he sprang up, and then he came to Jesus. Those three things I want to talk about. The first one is ignoring this lure and uh, the desires of the world. You see... The, Imagine the scene. There's blind Bartimaeus. He sat on the side of the road. There's tons of people cro uh, you know, uh, crossing in front of him, walking in front of him, hustle and bustle all around. Uh, and he can hear people as they're walking past. Jesus is coming. Oh, Jesus is leaving the city now. He's coming past. He can hear the buzz of conversation because if, you're, if you lose one of your senses, your other ones are heightened. So he could probably hear really well. He thinks... Jesus is coming, and as soon as he knows Jesus has passed by, he calls out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And everybody says, Shh, don't bother to teach a blind Bart. What are you doing? Shut up. You can imagine people telling him to shut up. That was the desire of the world. Don't bother the teacher. Be quiet. But what does he do? He ignores them. He says, No, no, no. I'm not listening to you. I want to talk to Jesus. I want to see Jesus. Not that he could see at that point, but I want, to, I want to be healed from my blindness. And so he shouts all the louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. And as we think about that in terms of our world, I wonder, has the consumer-driven marketplace um, culture that we find ourselves in caused us to be blind to Jesus' arrival in the city? such that we have to call out in the dark for him because we're not really sure if he's there or not because we've been so blinded by our culture that we don't know what's going on. Has the world drowned out all sensitivity to the presence of God so that when we call out to him, the desires of the world just creep in and crush us so that all we can see is that materialistic drive or that, that social media drive to, to look the best or be the best or uh, have the most likes and it's all the rest of it. What am I talking about? I think we find ourselves blinded to the presence of God in much the same way as, as, as Bartimaeus was, purely because of the lure of the, the world, the, 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 the lust after money and riches or fame or the good life or pleasure-seeking, all of this stuff that happens in our world and has been going on 
not since the 1960s, but since forever, since the dawn of time and humanity on the earth, we have always been lured by all these other things. We've not set our heart on things of God, and we've lost sight of God's love, of God's desires, God's heart for us, God's best for our lives. But we chase after all this other stuff because we think it's going to meet our needs. And I want to say that if we're finding that that's the case in our life, if we're finding that we're struggling with the world and all the desires, all we need to do is, like Bartimaeus, just call out to Jesus. Call out to Jesus. Ignore the lure of, and the voices of the world. Uh, as John, uh, John calls it in 1 John 2.16, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride in riches or possessions or the pride of life, as the old AV talks about it. Ignore all those desires. And it's, hard, it's easier said than done. I appreciate that. But look to Jesus. Call out to Jesus. Bartimaeus ignored what the world was doing, ignored what they were selling to him, and he called out to Jesus even in the midst of his blindness. And so if we're going to acknowledge Jesus, if we're going to have that constant communication and relationship with him, all we've got to do is call out to Jesus. That's the first thing. Second thing after calling out, is to throw off the old life. So, uh, Jesus calls, so by and Bartimaeus calls back again, even after being told to shush, Jesus says, call him here. And they say, and it's amazing how the world changes its tune. Do you notice that? Oh, cheer up, he's calling you. Well, one minute ago, they were telling him to shut up. That's what the world does. That's what the enemy does. One minute he tells us and lures us with these evil things, and the next minute he's accusing us of being terrible Christians. He goes to Jesus. But how does he get there? The first thing he does, he throws off his cloak. He throws off his cloak. And it seems like a really small and insignificant detail, but when I meditated on this passage, it was so strong, this little sentence here, that he just, he threw off his cloak. Imagine for a blind, homeless person on the side of the road who's got a cloak. That cloak is a security blanket. That cloak keeps him warm when it's cold, keeps him dry when it's wet. And so when somebody says, cheer up, Jesus is calling, and he, for him to throw off that cloak, that's a big deal. You imagine if that was you. That cloak is important. But when Jesus calls, what does he do? He throws it off and he goes to Jesus. So if we're going to have relationship with Jesus, if we're going to declare ourselves to Jesus, grow in our relationship, it's really important to throw off the cloak, throw off our old cloak, throw off our old self, our old life with all its entanglements in the world, the flesh and the devil. And when we do that, we'll be able to come to Jesus simply as we are, with no pretense, no depending on other people or other things for our salvation. No looking elsewhere for our needs, just to Jesus. Ephesians 4 verse 22 says this, uh, verse 22 to 24. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupted by its, and deluded by its lust, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourselves with the new self, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Friends, if you know Jesus today, if you've said yes to Jesus and God's plan for your life, if you are in Christ, that is who you are. New self created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Blows my mind. That's who we are in Christ. We're never called to live to be something. We're called to live because we already are something. We already are God's children, so we're called to live like God's children. It's not a list of rules and demands and regulations to be more righteous. You already are righteous in Christ. Amen? What we have to do is live like who we already are. That's so important. And so you, to do that, we've got to throw off the old cloak, throw off the old way of life. And be clothed in your new life and live according to... And again, I could preach sermon series just on that one bit. And the third thing that, Jesus, that happens here that, that we can learn from blind Bartimaeus is this. 
He ignores the world. He throws off his old life, his old cloak, and then he comes to Jesus. He comes simply to Jesus. And again, it's a tiny detail at the end of a, of a sentence. He gets up from his comfy spot. He manages to make his way over to Jesus to be face to face to speak with him. In that way, he is then able to declare himself to Jesus. He can say what it is he wants. He can have a conversation. And that is the same for all of us. For some of us, maybe we have thrown off the old life and we're really wanting to live out of our new identity. Maybe we've ignored the laws of the world and we don't have so much of an issue with that. But the issue is we just need to come to Jesus every day. What does Jesus say about this? Matthew 11, 28 to 30. You'll know it. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me, Jesus says. Come to me. Not the world, not your own understanding, not the lies of the enemy. Come to me and come to me alone. I am the one who will satisfy your every need. I will give you rest from all your religious burdens. That's what Jesus was saying there. I will teach you the rhythms of life. And, and I've said, I've shared this illustration a lot. The, the picture that Jesus has got there is of two oxen in a, in a yoke. Yoke is a big uh, wooden piece that goes over the shoulders of the ox. And you have two of them yoked up together. And you often had, in those days, a, an, an older ox to train a younger ox who didn't know what they were doing. And so the, the older one, he knew how to follow the commands of the master. He knew the rhythms of the plow and how it was supposed to work. He knew how to turn around when it was time to turn around. And in that way, the younger, less experienced ox knew how to do it. Friends, Jesus is the ultimate human. He is the one who shows us what true humanity looks like. If you want to know how to live your life, look at Jesus. Come to Jesus. That's all we need. But it can't happen. We can't um, have rest. We can't learn to live the life of righteousness unless we come to Jesus. No matter what's happening in the world. Yes, uncertainty around different vi variants of the virus. Yes, anxiety is on the increase. Yes, young people are more and increasingly uh, lost and don't know what's going on in the world. Yes, um, circumstances in your life may be utter de de dire and desperation. But you can come to Jesus no matter what state your life is in. Perhaps at the end of last year, you find yourself in a number of different states or you find yourself exhausted, spent, an empty tank. I can raise my hand to that one, definitely. Come to Jesus. Maybe you find yourself anxious or troubled in your heart or your mind, come to Jesus. Maybe you find that actually after the last two years you're just fed up, bored stiff, apathetic, you've got no patience for anybody or anything, no more compassion, come to Jesus. No matter what you feel like, good or bad, come to Jesus. He wants to have that close relationship. That's why he says, the question, why, what do you want me to do for you? Tell him, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm weak. Tell him, I'm anxious, I'm, I don't know what the future's going to hold, I don't know how to respond. Tell him, I'm fed up, I'm apathetic, I've got no more compassion for anybody anymore. I just don't care. Tell him. Talk to him. He stands before you today and he says, what do you want me to do for you? And you don't need to use religious language. You just need to tell him plainly, simply, and completely, I need you, Jesus. So Jesus wants that relationship with us. That's why he asked blind, Marta, blind Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And we can do that when we ignore 
the world and all of its desires and things that it tries to tempt us away with. When we throw off our old self, our old way of living, and when we just come to Jesus, just come to Jesus. That's all that's needed. Take a moment just to sit there with some of that. And in this moment, do what we did at the beginning. Imagine Jesus. You've, imagine that you've done what blind Bartimaeus has done. Silence the voices of the enemy, the, the world and the flesh, all those things. And just hear Jesus ask you that question once more and say, and he says, what do you want me to do for you? And just tell him in your own words what you need from him. And wait for him to tell you. He might not say anything in return. You might just feel his presence. Come, Holy Spirit, as we answer this question. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus, we come before you now, simply, humbly, plainly, as we are, and we tell you what we need from you. Lord, come and assure us of your presence and that you have heard us, that our words have not gone and fallen on deaf ears, but they are with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you want that relationship with us. Lord, help us every day to come to you and to you and you alone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Amen. We're going to keep uh, responding to that.